Hello, my name is Linda Carabaris and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you some quick and easy make-ahead meals that is going to really help you during a busy work week. So let's get started. As you can see, I've what? Mise en place, yes. And I, the first dish I'm going to compose is a stir fry that you're going to be able to use the leftovers throughout the work week. And um, this is especially nice during the summer when you can get nice fresh local veggies. So the first thing I have right here is my zucchini. I'll show you how I cut the zucchini for this particular stir fry. Cut off the ends like this. Put this aside. Then I just take the zucchini or summer squash. This is going to be a mix of both. Cut it down the center like that lay the flat side down then I cut each of these in half because I like nice small pieces in my stir fry another one right down the middle like that now I will turn and uh, I would say make these about an eighth of an inch thick because you want this to cook quickly so here we go See how nice and easy that is? And you're cutting them all at once. And I love showing cutting techniques because that's also what makes life so much easier when you're cooking to learn how to properly cut ingredients. Keep your fingers curled under. And here we are. How do you like that? Okay, and I put together a nice, uh, beautiful mix over here of both uh, summer squash, the yellow squash, and the green zucchini that I've already chopped. Isn't that pretty? So let me get my burner ready, and I'll be right back. Okay, start my burner on medium. Yeah, I'd say that's medium. Oh, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil. And use a regular olive oil, not an extra virgin. The extra virgin I usually use for um, salad dressings because it will burn easy. Okay, our oil is heated. Chopped red onion. Mm, I love the smell of onions cooking in the kitchen. Oh boy. Onions are a staple in my house. I'm going to move these around a little bit. Let them saute a minute or two just to soften a bit. Ah, uh, yeah. You can't get home and start making most dishes right from scratch. It's just impossible. So I do this Sunday night, and then I come home Monday, the first day of the work week, and all I do is throw all this together. So it's nice. Ah, oh, love onions. Let's add the garlic. I got a couple cloves here. I let, ooh, <laughs> I let this go about a minute and what you're doing here is you're letting that garlic flavor the oil. Mmm. Oh yeah. Okay, next up, look at this beautiful chopped red sweet pepper. Stir that around. Let this go 30 seconds to a minute. We're going to add our beautiful combination of 
zucchini and yellow summer squash. So far, are you with me? Nice and easy? Oh, yes. Look at how colorful and pretty that is already. Now, at this point, while you're waiting for this zucchini to finish, this is when I season. A little bit of kosher salt. Let's, uh, black pepper. Oh, I love the black pepper. Now, when I first prepare this dish during the work week, I usually use this, just the vegetable mix, as a side. Okay. Basil. Or oregano, whatever you like. Just, I like to make versatile dishes. And I like a little bit of heat, so I'm going to add some crushed red pepper. Just a tad. How's that? Okay. Keep moving this around. Mmm. Now, wine or sherry, if you'd like, to help move this along. It will soften the vegetables a little quicker and at the same time add some flavor. And I love sherry. So just, oh, maybe a tablespoon or two. That's all you want. Mmm. Oh, love that. And I love colorful meals. You know what? So check this out. Look at this. I would only finish this, so oh, maybe cook this another two to three minutes. Don't forget, once you shut this off, this squash is going to cook for about another minute. And I like it you know, just fork tender, not crunchy, but just so it's just done, not mushy. I guess that's the point I want to make. Because so many people overcook vegetable dishes, and you don't want to do that because it takes out, it removes a lot of the nutrients when you do that. You can take a little bit out like this, put it on a plate, and just test it. See, and I'd give that another minute or two based on the firmness that you desire. Mm. Now, I take halved grape tomatoes and I add them last. Why? Because you want to keep them nice and colorful and somewhat hold their shape. They'll release a little bit of the juices and it will look so pretty in your dish and you'll keep that freshness and the flavor. So I'm going to add them now and uh, stir fry probably another minute. Mm. There we are. And guess what? Done. Now, as I stated earlier, let me get a spoon here. When I usually make this, I serve it as a side. So whatever I'm having Sunday, because I have a little bit more time to cook on Sunday, I put this, I use this as a side dish. And I just want to show you, look at how pretty that is. So the leftovers I'll use a couple times during the work week because, see, you make quite a bit of this. So what can you do? I make uh, orzo ahead of time, orzo or any kind of pasta. So now I've got some orzo here. And I love using orzo for a number of different things. So as a second meal, let's add some of this beautiful some of these beautiful stir-fried vegetables to the orzo. Oh, yeah. 
I just love using orzo because it's just easy to mix in and now let me plate this Here's your other meal during the work week. And let's not forget fresh grated Parmesan on that. Mm. Okay, there's your next meal. Oh, and I almost forgot if you want to make this uh, even more complete, how about uh, adding, I've got a nice lean pre-cooked chicken sausage. You just heat up the sausage or you can even saute ground turkey or hamburg in a, in a skillet and add that to it. So now you've got something also a little a bit something different. So I'm adding my chicken sausage, and this is a Charisse flavored chicken sausage. And look at that with the meat in it. Uh, one more idea. You can actually chill this now and use it on a salad. Am I giving you enough ideas? <laughs> so once this is chilled, or you can serve it warm, it doesn't matter, but I just, you know, like it chilled on top of a salad. There you go for another idea, and just add a little bit of dressing. You can crumble feta over it, oh, just any number of things. Before you add the orzo, if you wanted to use some of it up, you could also put it on pizza throughout the work week. You, if you're making this on a Saturday, use it in an omelet, the vegetable mixture in an omelet for Sunday morning. Uh, I just love this. I do this mixture a lot and in the summertime it's even better when you've got all the farm stands around and you can get all these locally grown fresh vegetables. And as you can see, I have mise en place for our next make-ahead dish, one of my absolute favorites quesadillas. And why do I love quesadillas so much? You can make them as a snack, an appetizer, a lunch paired with soup, a complete meal with a salad, and oh, just so many, so many different ways to prepare them also. Very versatile. So let me explain first what I like to use for my quesadillas. I love this lavash bread. Look at how nice and pliable it is. And you can find this right in front of the deli. And it comes in um, this white. It comes in a tomato. And it may even come in wheat. I'm not sure. Now, why use the lavash instead of, some of you may be asking, a tortilla? Because the tortillas are thicker because they're meant to hold a heavier filling. I just love this lavash because it's nice and thin and easy to work with. So that's the lavash bread. Uh, okay, next ingredient is, uh, these are the green chilies. Use the whole green chilies and cut them because the minced ones in the can, they're very mushy. Okay, so let's take one of these out and I'll show you how to cut it. This is what they look like and these are mild. Now, if you like jalapenos, if you like quesadillas that are really hot, then by all means use the, I think they come in a can and they're already sliced, the sliced jalapenos. But those are a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to stick with the mild green chili. Just cut a slit in it like this. Okay, you open it up. Look at how nice that opens. So easy to do this. Then, Oh, maybe one eighth inch cuts. Keep your fingers curled under and just cut the chilies in long slices. Okay, I'm going to turn my board. Gather these together. 
and make a nice little dice. Again, I'd say about an eighth of an inch. So you see how easy this is? And there you go. There's your dice chilies. Let's put these in here in this little cup. Going to wipe down my board. All right, I've got some nice diced green scallion and some cumin, which is central to all kinds of cooking and especially Mexican. This is a nice earthy uh, spice. Please get yourself a bottle of cumin. This is so good and nice and fragrant. And I guess it's uh, ground from the flower of, the, of parsley, from the parsley family, so nice and earthy. Okay, I'm, I'll do a um, white and a tomato. I put them like this, flat out, use the surface like this. Now, cheese. First, we add the cheese. Now, I like making my own cheese mixture, and this is uh, sharp cheddar and Colby. Now, the packaged ones, I use the block cheeses and I grate them. The packaged ones are fine, but it's not going to give as nice of a melt as this will uh, because the packaged ones are treated, I think, with cornstarch or whatever to keep them from clumping together in the bag. So that's why I prefer making my own mix. And it's just fun. I can use all kinds of different cheeses for these. So about a half cup on each side. And one block of cheese will do four quesadillas. So put it on half. all that. I love cheese. Mm. Okay, on half. Ah, let's throw a little over here. This guy. Next, my minced green chilies. Just nice and light. You want to do a light toppings on these so they're easy to turn. Scallions. Oh, I love scallions. Oh, dropping more on the floor than on the quesadilla, but I'll get to that later. <laughs> ah. Next up, cumin. Mmm, this is the stuff. Nice and fragrant. This is a toasted cumin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now you could also add some diced chicken if you'd like. I'm just showing you the very plain, uh, basic quesadillas. Fold over the top like this, press it down, and I'll bring my burner over and heat the pan up and show you how to toast these up. Okay. Start your pan, oh, medium low. You don't want to burn these, so spray a little bit of uh, cooking spray in a 12-inch skillet. And you will need a 12-inch for these. You're going to need a little bit of room. Let's let that warm up a bit. While that's warming up, if you want to make these even more, even simpler than what they are, Here's some habanero. Well, actually, there is a habanero cheese, but this is a chipotle pepper cheese. And this is a little bit spicy and smoky, and I love this. So you could just grate this up and then just make the quesadillas like that if you want to make it super simple. So just they have, oh, I love all the different cheeses they have today. 
uh, that chipotle pepper one. They even have a hot habanero. Just oh, so many different types. Okay, so that's uh, so here's my method that I really love. Make sure the curved edge of the quesadilla is on the conforms to the outer edge of the pan. So I put one in like that, the other one like this. Let me show you, I'll give you a good shot of this. And why I love this method is because so many recipes, when you're making quesadillas, they tell you to put one flat bread down first, put your topping on, then another one. Well, you put it in the pan, it's so hard to turn. You're going to see how nice and easy these are to turn. It's so much easier to turn them like this and to cut them. So a couple minutes each side, check it. When it's toasted, we'll turn them. Okay, let's turn them. And you know what? I just want to mention the tomato will brown up a little bit quicker than the white one because of the sugars in the tomato. So here we go with flipping it. Just grab one corner, just be careful. Flip over. Oh gosh, look at, look at how nice and brown that is. Mmm. Okay, let's see. The, the other one, put your spatula like this. Whoop! Quickly, here you go. Mm -mm. Now you can have these as a meal and then make a head. Why? Because then you can cut these up, put them in the refrigerator. You can stick them on a cookie sheet the next night and heat them up. Okay. Done. Look at this. Five minutes. Put this aside. Whoop. Don't want to melt my spatula. Now, cut in the middle like this if you want to make lunch or dinner size. I'd cut them in quarters. Now you see also by this folding method how much easier it is to cut these. Isn't that nice? Oh, look at the cheese coming out of the side. Now, these look okay the way they are, but I'm going to show you how to make them even prettier and if you've got guests over they'll look so much nicer. Just take the edge off like that and now you've got a perfect triangle. Okay. Nice. Put a dollop of sour cream there, serve with a little bit of salsa. Let's do the tomato. Now, if you were going to do these for a make-ahead snack size or appetizer, I'd cut them in sixths. Let's plate these. And you know what? Here's my salsa. And you're asking, okay, Linda, what do you do with these ends right here? Well, these are for the cook. Mmm. Delicious. Now, I take a pan and we can freeze these. We're going to call what I you heard the term IQF, individually quick frozen. That's what we're going to do with our quesadillas. When I get an hour, I usually put together a bunch of these different colors, freeze them, bag them, heat them up for seven minutes. So we'll put these right on a sheet pan like this individually. Don't stack them just like this. Put this in the freezer, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, I've had these in for 20 minutes. 
and look at this frozen solid now I always date whatever I'm going to freeze ah, what's today okay 3 11 2012 and I'd say use these within 30 days you don't really want to keep bread products frozen more than that so check this out throw them right in the bag you've made your own IQF or individually quick frozen quesadillas then to reheat these just take them out put them frozen right on a cookie sheet 350 for seven to eight minutes or until the cheese starts to ooze out of them and there you go okay well I hope I've given you a number of different ideas for a busy work week meal and I'm Linda Carabaris for more recipes and to view previous episodes of Linda's Kitchen, log on to lindas-kitchen.com. And thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen, and I'll see you the next time.